episode Dream Within. You know, we decided, you know, we couldn't label the cameras, figure out which one's which. Eh, nuts to that. Uh, and hey, everybody, thank you for showing up tonight. Round of applause for yourself. Oh, it feels good to be back. This is our third live episode here at Dotty Dirt Zombie Den in fashionable North Minneapolis. I say it's going well. What do you guys think? Yeah. So that's that's what I did. 
And you did it and how, uh, because not only did you just decide to move on uh, past Fox, um, you decided to run uh, uh, for lieutenant governor under Matt Tenza. Matt Tenza is one of the coolest people that I do know, and, and I, I was incredibly honored. I, I, I did turn him down four times. Really? Before, yeah. So how did he come to you? How, how, does, how does somebody go, hey, get out of this wacky television business and let's change stuff? Well, it, actually, it was uh, Kim Ellison, who's Keith Ellison's wife, okay. who's our, our, our uh, congressman from the state of Minnesota. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, very cool person. Keith Ellison, everybody. Very cool person, true. So, you know, she called me one day. She was like, what are you doing? Let's have lunch. And I was like, OK. And, and she was like, you know, what, have you ever thought about running for office? And I just kind of laughed and said, let's have another cocktail. <laughs> and she's like, no, no, seriously. And, and, and that's, that's really what happened. She told me, you know, there's someone I'd like you to meet. And, and it was Matt. And, you know, I, I just find him a very righteous individual. He's a, a good guy with an with a amazingly smart man who has an amazingly clear vision of what he wants to do for, for, for Minnesota. Uh, it's just that we didn't have the point. But I, I really I really felt very good about my decision to, to, to run with him. And I, I again say, you know, it was, uh, it, it, it's one of those things that when someone comes to you at that level of office and they say, we want you to run for office, it, it's not like you're running for dog catcher. Not no, no. That they run with dog catcher, but you know, you have to weigh it consider seriously. You would have to run if you were a dog catcher. Yeah, yeah you know. And you know, and I had really cool people. Mike Freeman called me and was, you know, trying to really encourage me. And you know, I got called to Amy Klobuchar. It was very cool people. And so, after giving it a lot of weight and really thinking about it seriously, and again, I, I mean, it took me four times saying no, no, I don't want to do this. That I had some experiences in the community that really touched my heart. And just as you know, getting ready to leave Channel Nine, I wanted to do something that you know, most people that have the opportunity to be on the air for 20 years, they say goodbye and they retire to some farm or, or whatever they do. But I wanted to retire to let people in this community know how much I love them yeah. and how good they've been to me. I mean, I came here with no job. I came here on a Greyhound bus. Jeez. You know, I think I had about like 50 bucks in my pocket, and I lost yeah. my mic. I had about 50 bucks in my pocket. That was about it. Wow. And, uh, you know, this town just gave me the opportunity to do everything I've ever wanted to do in my life, you know, besides anchor and, and be well received. But, you know, to be a part of what goes on in this community, and, yeah. be, you know, I. I just feel really blessed. And so to say thank you, you want to say thank you significantly that makes a difference that might be long lasting. Yeah. And and so I said yeah. Yeah. Robin Robinson trying to make a change. <laughs> now uh, but I people people not who don't Obama or anything. Well, so, you know, I'm trying. I'm trying to do my thing. But people who don't know you, they might kind of find politics being out of left field for you. No, um, not at all. But yeah, let's childhood. So you were raised in a very politically active family. In yeah, I was. You know, my mom was heavily involved in politics before my dad. Um, but um, overall, they were both very, very, very involved in politics. They were both in the Democratic Party. But their outside politics was really what kind of colored everything that's going on. With so me. outside, what does that mean? Well, my, my mom's baby sister married uh, the son of Elijah Muhammad, who was a leader the of the Islam. Elijah Muhammad. Yeah. Really? Wow. So, I mean, I grew up going to barbecues with the Farrakhans and the Muhammads and you know, my cousin had Cool in the Gang play her 16th birthday, you know. Wait, you had this Elijah Muhammad stuff's all well and good. Cool in the Gang play the Gang, you know. They love Cool in the Gang. They're good Muslim dudes, you know. And, they, you, know, I, it, you know, my uncle had a lot of influence. I remember, you know, watching uh, Muhammad Ali and Thrill in Manila at his home and Close Circuit before Close Circuit was a big deal. You know, it's it kind of interesting, you know, growing up with those folks. But then on the other hand, I went to school with, like, one of the girls in my fourth grade class, her father was, uh, he was one of the attorneys for the Chicago 7, you know. Jeez. And so, I mean, I had a really, really very interesting childhood growing up, you know. FBI show up at our door sometimes, sometimes, you know, it was kind of weird. That's like the coolest Bones family tabs, ever. You know, our tabs. it was kind of cool. Yeah. Hey, but I mean, who would have thought little girl Robin, who, uh, you know, was hanging around that would end up doing Fox News for as long as he did. And now that you're out, give me some dirt. Give me some dirt. Yeah, give me some dirt. <laughs> what really happens there? Fox News and a Fox News show. Oh, that show. No, Channel 9 is, a, is owned and operated by Fox, so it is heavily entrenched in Fox. I, I heard that when I left, though, and I don't know if this is true, but I heard that when I left that the folks at headquarters at Fox said, oh, you mean she was a Democrat? Well, maybe it's good she's gone. Oh. So, that's what I heard to the great Snaps. Yeah, well, whatever. You know. um, all right, now, you, you you were entrenched for 20 years. No, 20 years was, wasn't here in Minneapolis. All in Minneapolis, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. I was trying to... I mean, I had a career before Channel 9. Now, let's talk about, how, how much time did you spend in uh, television journalism? Uh, I worked at three stations before.
before I came to Channel 9. So that means I'm a really old chick, but I worked in South Bend, Indiana, and then Norfolk, Virginia, and then Dallas, Texas, and Baltimore, Maryland before I came here. Yeah. Yeah. And let's talk about, uh, like, what's, like, the scariest thing that ever happened to you when you're on the news? Covered a Klan rally. Really? Yeah. Where at? Covered a Klan rally in Cummins, Georgia. Oh, thank God it wasn't Indiana. Anytime anybody has a Klan no, story, I mean, it's, a it's about my home state. Pretty cool. Pretty what, scary. How did that go? Well, you You're know, still the, here, the so. highlight of it was when the photographer I was working with, he kind of grew up in the area. And we were trying to find out where the Klan was staging its march before they marched into Cummins. And so we found it. It wasn't a very comforting feeling that we found it. And he goes, here, you take the car. I'm going to get out here and shoot. You drive into Cummins and, and, and go to the staging area. And I'm like, dude, do you realize, look at me, I am black, you know, and, and it's like, uh, you know, I was really scared, I think I was the most, I was about 24 years old yeah. at the time. So I drive down to Cummins, and um, there, there was a staging area, but there was a DQ real close, and it had a parking lot, so I parked my car in the DQ lot, and I start walking. And the streets are pretty much deserted, because they yeah. know what's about to happen, and yeah. folks don't really want to be bothered. No. And I remember walking, and I heard behind me, so I go, excuse me, excuse me. And I turn around, and it's this good old boy with a rebel flag hat and another dude in the sheets. I mean, totally yeah. in the sheets, right? And he has a camera. He's videotaping. Oh, and the, the dude in the rebel hat goes, can you wave to our camera? And I, I was like, yeah, hey. You know? <laughs> and I'm kind of backing up as I'm, you know, I've never stopped walking. I'm yeah. just like, just keep walking, keep walking. And then I hear the one in the sheets say, if they all look like you, we wouldn't mind you in coming. <laughs>
idea. Thank you, Jim. Hey. Hey, thanks, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. you know, um, in Robin's case, she had the uh, FBI showing up to her door. In my case, it was the um, Schwann's truck that had a cancellation in the neighborhood. <laughs> so if that gives you any indication. Uh, I do have a haiku today. Uh, Ian, it, it, uh, had a article, I read an article in the New York Times, and um, my friends at Harvard University did some hardcore studies on the influenza virus and our chance of actually catching it. And it goes like this. Harvard research states, popular people catch flu. So we should be fine. That's good. <laughs> Robin just took a picture of me uh, on her iPhone. <laughs> hey, uh, did you think this was all the show you were going to get? No! It's all the show you deserve, but damn it, we go the extra mile here at Drinking With Ian. All the way live in the basement, a band that we've had on the show already. This is the first ever band that's made a return to Drinking With Ian. Damn it, because I think they deserve it. And I think you will, too. They have an album coming out soon on Learning Curve Records. You should go buy it. It's not out yet, but when it is out, you should go buy it. Everybody, from down in the basement, Disaster
You'll get the best of merchandise and service when you patronize these good neighbors. Drinking with Ian is proud to be sponsored by gold medal winner UV Vodka. No matter if it's UV Blue Raspberry, UV Red Cherry, UV Green Apple, UV Ivory Vanilla, or UV Orange Vodka, UV flavored vodkas offer a premium product without the high price tag. Please visit UVVodka.com for additional information and recipes. No beer in the Midwest has a grander brewing tradition than Grain Belt. For over 100 years, Grain Belt has been the beer that fathers have passed on to sons and friends have passed amongst each other at local bars and watering holes. It is a beer with tradition that spans generations, which is why it has become legendary, both here and across the country. Next time you go out, ask for a premium. EMI Audio, the Twin Cities' premier resource for DJs, bands, and drinking with Ian. Rentals, sales, installation, and repair of DJ gear, PA systems, and effect lighting. A family-owned business for over 35 years. Visit emiaudio.com for all your audio, video, and lighting needs. A portion of Drinking with Ian is sponsored by The Onion, America's finest news source, and The AV Club, bringing you reviews and commentary on the arts and entertainment scene. Available at newsstands throughout the Twin Cities and online at theonion.com and avclub.com. Pizza Luce proudly supports Drinking with Ian. Free delivery until 2.30 a.m. weekdays and 3.30 a.m. weekends. Download our menu at www.pizzaluce.com. Drinking with Ian is nothing without our sponsors. Please support them. Sit, Ubu, sit. Good job. Woo. 